What's going on, y'all? So, so the has and the half not starts off again with Veronica crazy ass. Veronica and her crew, Ella DeVille, I'm finna hunt me some Dalmatian ass shoes on. Sitting at this goddamn piano, just playing off key, just doing anything. And she jamming to it too. Like, bitch, she is listening to the bomb ass song in her head. But what we're hearing is some trash, okay? That's what's going on. Baby, Veronica was on that bullshit tonight. Um, She going in her closet getting out uh black clothing and whatever trying to fake like she crying for her husband and people that died and all this stuff and she think that david is dead she get a phone call from the dude who um did the bombing and stuff like that and said it's done the phone finna be dead and so basically um you know putting it out there don't call this number no more the deal is done it is what it is it um click no more communication she was cool with that she was cool with all of that then we see david he actually in a the hospital they rolling him around to the um you know to 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 get help and all that stuff and it's like who is this who is this this is judge harrington david harrington where's erica where's erica she was in the car baby erica is torched okay Erica looked like Queen of Caution and Queen of the Damn when they um fucked her ass up at the end, okay? Just all ashed, okay? That's what she looked like. May Aaliyah rest in peace. You know what I'm saying? But um, I was like, baby, it's over and it's done with. Later on, we see that Candace had called Veronica trying to get her to help her, um, you know, get the money from their account that they set up for her out of Benny's account, trying to see if they can get the bank to reverse it. And she was being all nice and shit, bitch. Veronica was like, first of all, when she answered the phone, she was like, okay, I, I had to do what I had to do. Or, you know, I don't, in the way that she said it, um, talking about David, that's who she was referring to. And she thought Candace found out about it. So Candace was like, girl, what you talking about? She was like, girl, fuck that. No, girl, what you talking about? Bitch, what the fuck do you want? Okay, fuck these niceties and all this stuff. You dumb as hell. You really thought that you can do some shit like this? No, bitch, you can't do that. And I'm I'm over it because you're really stupid right now. I said, well, shit, bitch. Um, hmm. It is what it is on, on Veronica part. Veronica is just... I don't know why at this moment Candace thought that Veronica was going to be of a help. Okay, she was of help for a minute. But after you heard, well, I did what I had to do. Bitch, I would have known that something went down, okay? And at that point in time, it's a possibility that that bitch don't need my help no more, okay? Because she didn't deal what she had to do. And as she said, she got impatient and she did what she had to do for the, uh, to David. And I said, girl, you getting all up in your feelings and you thinking that this man is gone. You going down to the bar with RK and talking to Jeffrey. And um, I forgot that RK and Veronica had their little dalliance together. So I was like, oh, yeah, they did. She asking if she think that Jeffrey gay and all that stuff. He was like, well, I ain't gay, so I don't know. But, you know, that's just not my thing and all that stuff. And, you know, she telling Jeffrey, I'm grieving. That's why I got on all this black because I'm grieving for Melissa. Melissa's dead, so-called. I'm grieving my marriage. I'm grieving your father. I'm grieving this and all this shit. He was like, er, skirt, wait a minute. What the fuck up with my daddy? She was like, I don't know. But, um... I'm just grieving that motherfucker right about now. So he gets up and he go call uh, David. And of course, it went straight to voicemail. And when she got off the phone with Candace, Candace called Erica. Because she just knew something went right. Okay? And Erica's phone went straight to voicemail too. Because Erica is dizzied. Okay? And so at this moment, it was just like... <laughs> Veronica just needs to go somewhere. Okay? Did you got Wyatt up in the jail, baby. Wyatt... Wyatt is just a fucking mess. Wyatt is back there acting a fool, uh, making noise. Justin is sitting there in the office like, who the fuck is that making all that goddamn noise? Um, You know, and who back there playing around? It was like, what? No, he said, what asshole is back there playing around or whatever the fuck? And this officer was like, you the one that like asses, like playing the assholes, right? I said, hold up. I was waiting for the homophobic to come through. I was waiting for it to come through, and it did tonight, okay? He was like, what asshole are you talking about? What? No. What asshole is back there making all that noise? 
Oh, you the one that like playing the assholes, bitch. I sent the tape. I said, so you sat there and you watched that tape? What they say about you, bitch? It was like, you need to be protecting about your marriage and all this shit. whoop de woo we don't like you and all this bullshit. I said, well, damn. Justin sitting there like, fuck you. And I said, uh-uh, don't do that shit. Kathy was sitting there. And I should have known she was family or whatever. She trying to be there for him. And he was like... What the fuck you talking about? She said, you know, the LGBTQ. It was like, you know, Q is for questions. She said, first of all, I'm not part of your fucking alphabet. I said, bitch, you literally just told Jeffrey that y'all a couple, but you can't admit out in public. I mean, I guess it's baby steps, bitch, because it took you a long time to admit that you was a fucking couple with Jeffrey and that you, that's your little boyfriend or in your mind, your little boyfriend. And, um, now you can't even admit to a fellow gay member, a fe not even a member, a fellow, um, lesbian community, you know, whichever one you want to call it, a fellow gay, <sighs> that just sounds so wrong, a fellow member of the LGBT community, there you go, that you are also gay, she's a lesbian, y'all on the same wavelength, you can't admit that shit at, even to the same people, bitch, he was like, you could take Kathy, K-A-T-H-Y, LGBT, take that shit somewhere else, okay, we ain't friends, she was like, bitch, we gotta look out for each other, because these motherfuckers don't like you, okay, they don't like you for who the fuck you are, she was telling him some real shit, but he couldn't come to terms with it, because he knew that shit was true too, okay, this is all what's happening, he going to back, and he see that it's Wyatt, Wyatt is talking about some, hey, hey, come on now, man, why don't you give me something for my back, my back hurt, I said, oh, so now your back hurt, oh, sis, the fuck when, okay, Je um, Justin playing games with him, you know, talking about some, what you doing with, uh, uh, you gotta do something for me if I do that, you gotta stay away from Jeffrey, what you, what's your deal with him, he said, first of all, I told you, I don't even fuck with Jeffrey like that, okay, it is what it is with Jeffrey, now just give me some goddamn drugs, he go back, we see that Judge Cryer, aka Jim bitch ass, come down there demanding to see Wyatt, of course, they didn't let him see him. And then here comes George, the um detective, coming out there playing games with him. Um, You know, Jim really thinks that he has this pull out of this world and people are really, truly scared of him and his name holds weight. If your name held weight, bitch, J um, your son wouldn't be in jail. You wouldn't be going through all this. This investigation wouldn't be going on between you and, and, and seeing what's happening, trying to get your ass in jail. And George Shoal ain't scared of your ass, okay? You trying to say, well, I'm this and you doing this witch hunt. I was waiting for George to say, no, baby, it's very much real because the victim did not die, all right? He told us who, who exactly it was, okay? We got the camera. We got all that stuff. But, you know, he didn't go that far. But he did let him know that David was in the hospital. And, um, you know, of course, Jim calling David to see what's going on with that. And we're going to see in the next episode that he does go up there to the hospital and try to check on him and see what happened. And in that preview with Catherine, he told Catherine what was going on. And Catherine said, damn it, I can't stand that bitch, Veronica. That bitch always come up with the good ideas first, okay? Maybe I should have tried to kill your ass. I said, bitch, that's not what I thought you was about to say. But go off and you real as fuck for that one, okay? But, um, you know, moving on from that, um, speaking of Jeffrey... He did go down to the bar and he was talking to RK trying to figure out what the fuck was going on and, you know, getting out of RK that he was going to try to rob him. And he was trying to get the truth out of him about what happened between him and Justin. And he was like, did he touch you? Did he do this? And he was trying to make it seem like nothing happened. No, he just took me to the side. He talked to me and he let me go. He was like, no, he didn't because that's not his MO. That's not what he do. That's not what he's about. And I know you're lying. See, he took me down a dark road, kept on following me, then took me out the car and fondled me. Okay. So I know he did something to you. It is what it is. And that's when Catherine walked up, whatever. Um, uh, this whole shit, who else, who else, who else? Okay, so I got Justin, I got Wyatt, got Jim, Catherine did call uh, Hannah to see what was up, and, you know, this whole thing with Veronica, and, um, oh yeah, Benny. Benny is at the hotel. Benny is still talking to Gia. Benny goes up there with Gia to her room to get a fucking massage, okay, a massage, you know, and he was like, I got 30 minutes. Gia is telling and texting um Candace everything that happened. Like, you know, 
uh, he wouldn't stay at the bar, so we had to go to my hotel room. She was like, okay, cool. Don't have sex with him. She was like, I'm not. She was like, I'm dead ass serious. She was like, I'm dead ass too. I'm not going to fuck this man. I'm going to keep you giving you updates. Bitch, he get up there. He's taking off his shirt. He started taking off his pants. Gia said, wait a minute, bitch. What you doing? Put them pants back on. He said, no, this is how we going to do this shit. He lay on his stomach and then she, you know, high color dress up so she can straddle him sitting on his little pumple booty. I said, Benny got a nice little booty right there. Okay. And then all of a sudden he rubbing on, she rubbing on him and all that shit. And then <laughs> I'm saying like, they finna fuck. They finna fuck. Because this motherfucker turned over. And she was like, what are you doing? Man, you sitting right on his dick. What you think about to happen, okay? You don't feel it rising? Baby, you look like it rose already half mass. Um, Next thing you know, he was like, give me a kiss. I said, you want to kiss a bitch that you don't even know yet? Like, that girl could probably have herpes on her lips. Anyway, they get to doing it. Next thing you know, we see a scene. I said, Gia, didn't, didn't, didn't care to say don't fuck him? He she get fucked by him, okay? And just enjoying it. Enjoying the love of it. I said, oh my God, that's what it takes. That's what it takes. Jill, you are an easy bitch, okay? You really have no fucking um self-restraint in anything, bitch. But in the process of that, uh Benny gets a phone call from Mitch. Mitch is calling him because to tell him, baby, you need to lay low because it is a hit out on your ass. From the family because they did not know. Benny, not Benny, Mitch goes back to the Iron Bar, Iron Bone Hotel, um, um, bar, whatever. And we see Vincent in there and we see, um, I guess one of Mitch's cousins or whatever the fuck. Because he called um, Vincent, uh, Vinny. Is it Vinny or Vincent? Vincent. Call him his um, uncle too. So we see the dude that supposedly... You know, the racist dude that was um trying to make it seem as if Benny was the one who ki tried to kill Vincent. Right. Him sitting at the bar was like, so did you get old boy? You know, the black one. The one he said that he kind of knew you and all this shit. He said it wasn't him. Okay, you had the shit wrong. And old boy, the other one was like, but he the kid that tried to kill Vinny and all this shit. Like I said, you got it all wrong. It wasn't even fucking him. And he was right. I said, Vin Vin Mitch, you could have did a little bit more to stand up. Because to me, Mitch should have fucked that nigga up in the baseball cap. Okay? Um, because of him trying to automatically think that the black kid, you know, being racist and all that shit, um, you know, towards his friend and didn't even really investigate enough or, you know, just automatically assume that's what he did. And so he was telling him how, to, how they still weren't trying to listen. Okay. How, you know, because I talked to Vincent myself. Okay. He's up, he's talking and he said that he got the proof and he know exactly who did it. He got the transaction stuff behind the bar and they looked at it and it said white crier and come to find out the nigga with the hat. He knew who the fuck white quiet is. He said, spoiler, rich white boy and all that stuff. I said, uh-huh. Uh-huh. They was like, yeah, bitch, we finna find that motherfucker. But then the other un un cousin was like, ah, oh, shit. I gotta call Don and see if he moved out yet because they had already went down there to Don to, um, I guess, put a hit out on Benny and to get his ass. So that's why Mitch had to call Benny to tell him to lay the fuck low. Ain't no telling if he gonna get the message because Benny was up there getting his, um, dick fucked. You know what I'm saying? He was getting his dick wet and everything. So he pulled up to the house and... I'm like, he probably didn't check his messages either. Mind you, when he pulled up to the house, we got Candace sitting in the van with, um, you know, Malik and them and RK stucking out the house because they finna go up there and um, do some shit to Ken uh, 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 Hannah. So she had to call Benny to tell him to get his ass up out of there, to meet him back at the hotel, make a false little, um, you know, thing to make, make him seem as though... You know, it's important. I really need you to come back to the hotel. We're not talking about this money stuff. We, I need to talk to you about something else. And he was like, okay, fine. See, Benny good because it wouldn't have been me. First of all, you're wasting on my gas and you're wasting on my goddamn time. So, therefore, no. I'm home. It is what it is. Sorry for you, okay? But Benny, he went on ahead and went back to the hotel. And, you know, um, what else wound up happening? Uh... Do I forget anything else before I get to this part? Mm. 
We got Wyatt, we got Jim, we got Catherine, we got Hannah. Hannah was on the phone talking to um Mr. Derrick. And he, he was in his feelings because he was still out there fixing the AC unit. And he had to wake up some other people just to get some parts and all that stuff. And he really wanted to see Hannah. He was like, man, we should go out on another date. I'm trying to get to see you. She was like, little bitch, I'm finna go to bed. Derek was like, really? You know, so I'm gonna call you when I finish. She said, well, if you call me, I ain't gonna, and I don't answer. I'm already asleep. That's what it is. It seemed to me like me and Derek was sitting there like, what time of the day is this? It's 8 o'clock at night and you still finna go to sleep? You know, I know some people, you know, older people, they go to sleep early and shit like that. But damn, girl, what time of the night is it? Okay. But, um, you know, she that's when she get the phone call from Catherine. And in the midst of the phone call from Catherine, you know, she wanted to get off the phone because she heard some noise going on downstairs. And she thought it was Benny. Come to find out it was Malik up in there. Um, and as you heard on the background, it was election night too. That's why I'm wondering what time is because the results haven't come in. You know, they saying that Charles is in the lead, but don't look like he going to get Virginia or some state, whichever one, you know, um, we hear that. And then we see Hannah go up into the kitchen and she was like, Benny, I'm in t I got to tell you some stuff. And then she just started running. Oh my God. Oh my God. She put up a fight cause she was about to knock that motherfucker out with that cast iron skillet. I said, oh, don't let her get hit with that because that shit will knock your ass out. Take you out, bitch. But, you know, that's how the episode ended. I'm trying to think that I forget anything. Mm, if I did, put it down in the comments. This was a cute little short episode. You know, it flowed kind of okay. Uh, I'm thinking. I can't wait till Veronica get hers. I want to see how far they're going to go with Hannah, okay? Because if I, I got a feeling they're going to do something that they're not supposed to do. Like, Candace said don't hurt her. And I got to feel like K Hannah might get hurt in the process. And then Derek might show up. What if Derek hear it because he is on the property fixing the AC unit? What if he hears the commotion outside and goes in and, and, and kill the motherfucker that did the shit? You know what I'm saying? Bitch, it's about to be crazy as hell, okay? Y'all tell me how y'all feel about it. Like I said, if I missed anything, put it down in the comments, and I'll see y'all later. Peace.